All right, joining us now with more California Congressman Daryl Issa, along with the author of the great U.S.-China tech war, senior fellow at the Gatestone Institute, Gordon Chang. Gentlemen, both, thank you for being here. Gordon, your book is The Great U.S.-China Tech War. Where does this type of, let's assume, just for purposes, we don't know tonight that whatever that device was was necessarily Chinese. Let's assume that it was, or at least that they would have follow-ons. What does it tell you about the tech war or the looming conflict with China? Well, we know that the Chinese are hoovering up data around the world, and they get it from spy balloons, they get it from TikTok, they get it from so many different yes. sources. And artificial intelligence, you know, there's two things to it. There's the technology, but there's also how much data you put into it, because the more data you put into it, the better these systems work. So clearly, the Chinese are very good at taking our data and data around the world and making their AI very, very good. Congressman, do we not look like fools at worst, asleep at the wheel at best uh, right now with the way we engaged with the first device and now it's the second device and we're reacting? I mean, what are we to read and take from the decision making of this administration? How does Beijing view it? Well, Beijing <clears throat> probably is noticing that we don't make the same mistake twice. And to that extent, I'll give the president uh, recognition that he didn't make this exact same mistake twice. But there's no question. Two weeks ago, he was tested. He failed the test. Uh, he appears to have been tested again. Uh, but, you know, one of the challenges is there there is really no difference in the decision between uh, a bus and a car uh, that's flying <laughs> over your, uh, your, your country because a suitcase can hold a nuclear weapon. So from a size standpoint, mm -hmm. both of these had the potential lethality uh, that should have been taken seriously. And uh, I'm glad it was this time. But we've got a lot more to do. Our southern border is open. Now our nor northern border appears to be open for aircraft. Gordon, are we at more threat today than we've ever been from China based on their calculation of this administration? I actually think so, Pete, because deterrence has broken down. And we've known for the last two and a half years or so that the primary Chinese narrative about the U.S. is that we're in terminal decline, we're finished as a power, and that countries around the world should ditch relations with America and start obeying China. And one of the most difficult and most dangerous periods in history in general is when you have to reestablish deterrence. And that's exactly what the Biden administration has to do. You know, this balloon flight, the, the Chinese one, showed the utter disrespect of the Biden administration and the United States by China. And that shows a very dangerous mentality in Beijing because that's going to drive them to do things that could lead us to a world war. Remember, we got war in Ukraine. We could have war on the other side of the Eurasian landmass pretty soon. Sure, we're blowing up pipelines uh, and of our, of our allies and others. And uh, one miscalculation, you're on the wrong side. Congressman, uh, China believes we're a declining power. Uh, are they right? Well, they are right in a sense that our power was was unchallenged for more than a decade, sort of the legacy of Ronald Reagan. It is now being challenged. Uh, and so far, we've failed a few tests. Certainly, Afghanistan is a good example. Ukraine, back in 2014, became an example when we didn't respond as promised uh, to the aggression mm -hmm. of Russia. And it's continued. Uh, it's reversible. We certainly have the capability, but we've got to begin using the tools we have. Uh, most countries, if Ronald Reagan were alive and in the White House right now, 100 or 200 uh, spies posing as State Department people for the Chinese State Department would be packing their bags throughout the United States and be sent home. There are tools that we can use in addition to not sending the Secretary of State. The president has to begin using those tools if there's going to be confidence among our allies. Yeah. Gordon, we're talking about a spy balloon, but the reality is the most popular app in America right now is TikTok. And kids between the ages of 4 and 18 uh, use it on average 100 minutes a day. The communist Chinese pump, you know, perverse and, and radical propaganda toward our kids that they don't even allow their own kids to look at in China. Are we, are we being serious about what we're staring down here? No, we're not. And, well, you know, that's 86 million spy balloons um, yes, in the exactly. United States. They, they, as they say, you know, they take information um, from those, and that's illegal, surreptitious taking of information from all of these phones. And, and that, of course, goes into their AI systems. 
But it's also, as you say, China pumps its um, through the algorithm that curates content on TikTok. China is able to send a lot of information, like Russian um, narratives about the war in Ukraine, glorifying drug use. Um, the Chinese actually use TikTok to um, to uh, subvert the United States through encouraging and fomenting violence. They did that in 2020. So really what we have is a number of different apps. And it's not just TikTok. It's also WeChat. And President Trump banned it. And President Biden reversed the ban. Uh, Congressman Issa, uh, you know, it's, and it's, well, go ahead. Please. And you know, it's even, it's even worse than that. If you go to Apple and you look at the top three apps, number three is TikTok. The first two are also Chinese. <laughs> if you go to McDonald's to make a purchase, you are actually using Chinese source code as part of the pay, paying for it. So the the depth of it. TikTok is just the canary in the coal mine. We have a lot of other problems that need to be dealt yeah. with and dealt with on a, uh, a broad basis. I fear the next generation may look back at us and say, what fools, what fools they were. How did, how did they not see it? Congressman Issa, Gordon Chang, you're not fools. You're talking about it. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it.